Hey guys, welcome to Channel Madness, and today's video will be a review slash my opinion of the Horus Heresy book series, The Mechanicum. This is the ninth book in the Horus Heresy series, and boy is it a doozy. So with no strains and spoilers, I'm going to jump right in. You have been warned. So like I said before, it's the ninth book in the series, um, following uh, the Battle for the Abyss. And it's preceded by uh, it's preceded by the Battle for the Abyss, and it follows the Tales of Heresy. It's written by Graham McNeil. I think I've read it once, and I've listened to it about twice now. This must be either the second or the third time I've finished listening to it on the audiobook, and it's just as good as I remember the first time. If you're a big Mechanicum fan, the Adeptus Mechanicus, or Knights, or Titans, this is the book for you. This is this is this is the book that made me sort of. Feel the, feel the true love for the Mechanicum itself and a lot for the Titans and, and the way they run. We get a lot of information about some of the major players like Calibor Hell, the fa Fabricator General of Mars, um, some of the other ones like Fabricator Locum, uh, Lucas Chrome, uh, Corel Zeth. She's only featured in this book and she's mentioned in other books, but she does play a major, um, major significance in this, this book as well. Um, and we get a nice, interesting sideline story about, um, not sort of uh, adepts, but more like just, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to say like plebs or guardsmen, but just, you know, like lower, lower operators. There's a nice little sub story about the um, Mechanicus's his plight. Um, so basically, what happens is, is we sort of start off with, um, uh, we we'll start off with a little night night story about the first knights um, and the prophecy of the emperor, and um, how he comes to how he comes to um, Mars um, at, at the like um, basically under the knee of uh, some knights. Some knights, some knights come to his like his um, where his, his, you know a ship, his golden ship is going to come down and land, and and they see it and um, they bow, and the emperor's just like, hey, I'm here. Um, and basically, it was it was like word for word pretold in like the um, prophecy that was you know of the ominous uh, coming. So everyone was like, "He's the one," and whatnot. And then we and then we, after that, that was like the first sort of thing. And then we go off and we proceed to um, I think it's a sort of a a, a, a small small engagement. A couple of knights are defending. I think Lucas Chrome or one of one of the um, fabricators, one of the um, adepts um, reactor sites. Um, from basically feral, uh, feral servitors, and you get a, it's a nice, interesting look at how me the mechanic Mars runs. You, you figure because like Mars is the forge world that the whole thing is just like this, basically industry thing, but it's, it's not like that at all. Even in the actual book itself, you get a, a map, a detailed little map of what Mars or the complex is supposed to look like. Um, not that I, not that I could figure out what a lot of it meant at the time, at the time, but that's fine. Um, and you know, it's it's just like there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of wasteland in between the um all the um, what do you call them? Uh, each each adept's you know forge, yeah, forges. You know, there's a whole bunch of land between each forges, and there's a whole sort of you know barren wastelands of my like a uh, maze that. A labyrinth that you know nobody goes to so it, it was interesting to see that you know this it's not as is like if you didn't know anything about mars and this is your first look into it you you sort of like oh okay um and you know the, 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 there are sort of still threats out there just like there are still threats on on terror itself um you know from like the wild people who just live in the mountains or whatnot but out here it's mostly like feral servitors and and um basically people who want to scrap things um and yeah so a couple of knights are defending from a feral some defending um uh for a reactor site from some feral servitors when it um unexpectedly get to take by a little bit more than just feral servitors and some other people uh another forge is um another adept skatari but more importantly they get attacked by the um the cobalt carbell cobalt machine um carbanda carbanda i think that's like carbanda is a demon that sanguinius fights um I'm not entirely sure what it's um, called. Um, unfortunately, the information I tried to pull up here didn't actually have Carband. Carband. It was. Ba it's basically an, an AI, an AI device, an AI machine created by one of the adepts loyal to um, fabricated um, Cabal Hell, 
Carbell Hell. Um, I think it's Lucas Chrome that made it. Yeah, because he 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 tinkers with um cybernetic, uh, the cybernetic him and, and whatnot. So he made um there are some a, a few more short stories um that you read later on about this the, how this machine was made and its first sort of interaction and how you know um the first sort of, it's it's its first friend and then it kills its friend. And it's like oh yeah, but it, um we sort of just see this is the first introduction we get to it. It's basically a, a spherical. Uh, machine that's just, like pimped out with weapons galore and um and the, the knights encounter it and um they try to engage it but it doesn't obviously go with their favor favor one of the one of the things they find out well, well i think only one knight engages it the other one didn't see it entirely but um one of the things he finds out is that this thing has voice shields which is unheard of on a, on a machine you know the small like because even knights can't um hold hold void shields they have their own ion shields which are nothing like void shields only titans are big enough to power void shields but no apparently this thing is void capable um you see it and it, and it, and it takes out a reactor which detonates it and um causes mass damage and starts sort of like a not a war but a, sort of like a progressive political movement because um like one of the knight houses that rely on um I think it's like Knight Tempestus, uh, Legio Tempestus, or yeah, Legio Tempestus relied heavily on like these reactors to power them. Like the Air Depths and the uh, Legios have sort of like a, you know, uh, uh, an allied sort of thing going. Like the Air Depths will provide power to the, the Legios and the Legios will defend, you know, the Air Depths forges in return. And, and that's, <laughs> that's how the dynamic works. Um, but with like obviously one of the one of the Air forges being forges being attacked and and um, there was a big meeting big meeting about uh, with all the Legios got together um, to discuss what happened um, they, they accused Legio Mortis of doing it because these this this is the one that um, pleased themselves so obviously Horus's uh, banner um, because obviously they they they're, they're kind of against Tempestus and striking at what um, the reactors that power them um, gives them a huge advantage. <laughs> But it was sort of just sort of a political debate. Nothing really happened at um, as out, outset. And then we move off and we get to see learn more about um, some of the other other forges and whatnot. We get to see um, Regulus. Um, I think it's his name is Regulus. He ba he's basically the um, the adept <coughs> who was in charge of representing the Mechanicum for Horus. Like he was the one who was with Horus the whole time. So he, he comes back and he he's talking to Cowboy Hal and he's offering him. Um, he's like you know. The Emperor is no good for us, but Horus is willing to um, help us out. And Cabo Hell's like, <coughs> yeah, I'm pretty tired of the Emperor and the Imperium taking advantage of us. But, you know, how can you prove that Horus is going to do anything different? And then Regulus presents the, S the C um, STCs, the standard construction. You know, the, the things that they found in the, um, <coughs> like the second book, uh, False Gods, that um, Horus found and gave to Regulus as a gift. And they also gave him the unlock codes to the Vault of Mortis. Vault of Mortis? I don't know what, it's something like that. But basically it's the, it, um, which, it's the, it's chaos inside, really. The warp, warp and mechanic. And it's the start of the Dark Mechanicus and Cobra Hell is just none too happy to jump onto that, that bandwagon. So, seals the fate for um, the majority of Mars there. Um, they go into, they find, they go into the labyrinth, they find it, they unlock it and start producing you know, the first of the sort of dark mechanicum devices you know the warp warp spawn half half demon half sort of machine device things um and this is sort of like the prelude to basically the civil war as, as it starts um and like before the actual war starts they unleash a scrap code that hits the entire planet but we'll come back to that because before all that happens we get a little a interesting sort of sub story with these, these few sort of um other other um characters uh one of them named delia kathina i don't know delia they refer to her as, as delia um mostly and she was basically just this lowly little scribe worker a transcriber who got in trouble for tampering with her device and making it better so she was about to be executed because you can never mess with you know the mechanicum's work um but she got saved by adept uh coriel zeth the um forge mistress of the uh, molten city molten it's called something specific it's basically a rare edge it's a unique forge that's um been built inside uh, a dead volcano which has been brought back to life it's sort of a unique one of a kind and she's the mistress of this entire thing she, she you know she's like one of the 
one of like I don't know how many. There's only like ten adepts that run Mars. Um, Fabrica, you know, being obviously the one in charge. But uh, Coriel Zeth is one of them, and um, she's friends with uh, Fabricator Locum and somebody else who uh, uh, Impervia Maximum, another Forge Master. Um, these are like the last loyal. Like these are the few loyalists. Um, adepts we get to find out about um yeah and so she she seeks she saves um dahlia with um with intentions of using her because she saw potential in her um and we also get to look at her her view um which is really interesting because she's like the one one sort of adept or you know a, a, a high in the league who does not believe in the omnisa or the machine god as a whole she just purely just believes that machines are machines and we just need to take that technology and go. She doesn't believe anything has a machine spirit and it's holding everyone back. And obviously that's <laughs> that's incredible heresy, especially in the 40K universe to say something like that. And she's one of like, you know, she's an adept, a very, you know, one of the most powerful people on the actual Mars itself. And for her just to be, to be like, nah, I don't believe in and whatnot and, and, and yeah. But yeah, she's working on a device and she sets the task to Dahlia and a few other cronies to, um, to unravel some plans and start working on things, which may or may not be the Golden Throne. Uh, it was never really clear. Um, they, it, it was like, uh, it was a, a sort of, they work on a device that it felt similar to the Golden Throne, but they never sort of confirmed it. Um, it was supposed to tap into the warp specific in specific regions to unlock all, all knowledge. Um, and, and and they do they um, and they do uh, and they do this and they accomplish their task but they and uh, uh, as all things go it doesn't it didn't there was a there's a there's a fault um they didn't plan for the amount of power in the warp go figure um because she was basing off some num um, some previous numbers um that they only just tested slightly not realizing that when they did the full test they were going to do it through the astronomicum which basically blew everyone out um well not yeah like it was just like this golden throne with one psyker in it who has been powered by a hundred other psychers or a hundred or thousand other psychers and basically when they hit the astronomic and the entire room just sort of blew up um everyone sort of sizzled out and um dahlia runs in to try and save this um the psyker because she made friends with him um but he sees everything in the split second before he has you know his life is extinguished and he, he sort of transfers what he knows well, part of what he knows to Dahlia, giving her a warning about Mars and, and some of its great secrets. Um, and from there, she's basically knocked out cold, and that's when the scrap code hits, and basically Mars basically fucks itself. Like, like it goes into great detail about how everyone fucks himself and, and what, what happens. Like, some some forge, like, forge are hit with the scrap. The scrap, the scrap code is just like this code that hits the network, and it's like part warp, and, and it's mischievous, and it's, it's doing things deliberately. Like, it'll shut down cooler reactors on, 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 on you know, power plant sites, creating a, a chain of nuclear explosions across Mars that wipes out, you know, you know a third of it or and you know sub sub hives that contain you know hundreds of thousands of people um the oxygen supply is just cut off so you know there's like over three hundred thousand people's deaths and basically it just happens all across mars as the scrap code attack goes through and just wipes forge off forge by the in, in the most devastating means possible you know there was like one plant that one place that accidentally had a vi you know the life eater un unleashed and everything everyone just melted down as you can imagine from the first you know when the viral bombs that hit and things like that um but we we get left with um coriel zeth uh fabricator locum locum cane and impervious maximum are sort of left standing alive because they've developed they have changed to a new sort of system the new sphere which was created by coral zeth um we know more about this, the new sphere in the 40k universe because it, it's it's more widely used back then it was only just sort of developed and not many people were, were using it yet um but coral zeth was the one who designed it and so um they just sort of impl implemented it and the um <clears throat> the scrap code wasn't really able to get a hold of that so their their forges were mostly intact i mean there were a few problems but they were mostly intact and then basically at this point the civil war kicks off because um you know they're like are you are you going to side with cabal hell and the chorus is like nah i don't believe in 
I don't believe in, in your 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 you know your propaganda and the, the mechanic. And they try to arrest her, but she's like, "Nah, bro, I got I got friends." And that's when like um you know, a night house comes out and it's like, "We'll back her up." And then like, okay, they they fuck off. <laughs> and then, but they come back obviously with um obviously with 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 reinforcements and there's a, a, a civil war that happens later on. Um and we we, we scroll we scroll back to the, the Legios and even even they're having their own sort of stories and, and doing things like we go through Legio Tempestus uh Tempest <coughs> Tempestus um and and how they're dealing with like they're they're out and about and trying to keep their land safe and then Legio Mortis sort of interferes by just walking out from their 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 um their temple site and just walking like across the borderlands that um, divide sort of um, between them just instigating basically a war between Tempestus and Mortis. No shots were fired but they came very close um, due to provocation um, but the guy who the storm lord who's in charge of running that um, uh, Cavallaro I'm not sure what store in Indivar Cavallaro storm lord of Legio Tempestus who basically runs it he suffered grievous losses because um, obviously he had a power react. His, his his reactor wasn't working 100, percent and he had to push it really hard just to get get there to, to defend his lines, and even and that was enough to kill his machine, unfortunately. So with um, and then we scroll, and then as that happened, and then we as we continue on, we um. He's put into a casket. He it's a nice view for him because we see him as a um a princip that pilots a machine. Uh, through obviously MIU, and then we see him as he develops into um, full casket, you know, just that gets plugged in, and and how that works, and it's, and it's quite nice and interesting. And he's sort of, and they're all sort of left out in system until until it's time to bring them in, and he's um, they're all updated, and it turns out, you know, they declare he, he summons all um, he summons his legio, and they declare they declare war because um, generally the legios and the mechanicum are two separate entities, like. They were keeping out of the Mars' affair while Mars was dealing with their own shit, you know, fighting each other. But the Legios always sort of kept them. But they just couldn't keep out of this because this was just too big. And so basically they decided that they were going to march. And then we, we, yeah, we, we come back to Dahlia and she sort of wakes up and 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 whatnot. And and she, you know, she has these dreams and, and whatnot or what influence. And she's basically, she needs to go to a place that's in the labyrinth like deep deep and deep out in the wastelands to follow you know some cabins and you know she has to get to get some point and so she goes off with her her party of, of friends and it's a nice it's a nice interesting story um we find out like obviously cab or hell or, or some you know the bad people find out about her because obviously they're trying to tap into the astronomic and lit a giant beacon and so all of Mars was like, what the hell is that, you know, over there? And so, you know, they caused problems and they found out, you know, um, that Dahlia was a part of it. And so they, they try to stop her, but and they, they do so by putting um, the Cabanda machine, you know, the AI machine after her, which they, they stop her train and well, it stops her train, basically blows it to hell and it's about to kill them. But she, her, her weird new funky warpness power or you know, machine power that she's, she's got, um, she's able to tap into the machine and trick it to believing that they're not there. So it goes off and, and whatnot. Um, and they continue on their, their journey um, to, to to whatever the point, which they eventually get to after you know some monumentous amount of traveling. And they get they find it's, and it gets a little bit weird at this point when they find so like this old guy and he's he's the guy he, he's the last guardian and he's protecting the dragon. Um, if you know anything about the history of you know the law it's um people refer to it as the void dragon it's one of the katans or it's not it's not confirmed here they just refer to it as the dragon of mars and they go into a little bit of story about what it is you know the emperor slaying it on terror and sealing it away here and it's sort of left, left to everyone's own imagination to decide what what it, they interpret out of it. i i i i believe you know like the, the emperor like they, he, he he sealed Mars here away to influence the planet because obviously he had some sort of machine like essence that if there was a spirit a machine spirit in the machines this this was it <coughs> um which i guess explains my sort of standpoint which i'll i'll get to later um yeah so they, they he finds they find so dahlia and her little gang finds the um the the guardian of the dragon and he explains you know uh, the great the great the great lie and, and and whatnot and then 
Dahlia sees it all. She sees the Emperor sealing the dragon away here. His plans obviously mold, make this dragon mold the Mechanicus into what it is now because he needs obviously something to run his forge. Um, and that if this, uh, if this truth was ever release, released out into the open, um, obviously it would just break everything down to find out, you know, this huge lie that you know, the, the Emperor isn't the Omnisar and the Omnisar isn't really a thing but more of a sort of uh, this creature that's been sealed away just and it's just it's just influencing the, the Mars just by its presence rather than anything else um, yeah and, and it turns out she's tasked to be the new guardian because the last guardian's been here for like 10,000 years or something so he sort of fades away into dust and Dahlia takes over and and that's like that's that part of the story and it's, it's really interesting to see that um unfortunately there was a book that had all the like the truth written down and as her friends go off and she's left to, the, to take over the of the other guardianship with her and her little bodyguard for the next ten thousand years the book that was there has vanished so someone's obviously taken it um as of now i i don't know who took it or what's been done with it i mean Obviously, the truths haven't really come out because we we'll know about it in the forty-first millennium. It's, it's you know ten thousand years later, which would be quite interesting to carry off to find out who the new guardian is because it's obviously been ten thousand years. So Dahlia's its time has come, so somebody's got to take her place. But yeah, so back back we go back there. New guardian, Dahlia's new guardian. Um, and but the the commander machine finds him right at the last minute, and it's to, it's to complete its goal because it's, it's learning, it's AI, it's smart. But um, they get saved by the two knights that at first came across um they're on a, they're on a mission to finish you know to get revenge and and it's a really nice sort of end and i think they finally do destroy it and this is the end of the cabana machine which is kind of interesting because we we see the end of it but we get to see more about its origins and its making and other stories so uh, i hope i think it's the end it may it may came back it may come come back it is it is a one of a kind machine but then again it is ai that was created so maybe um lucas Crone can make another one or a similar one who knows and then we, we go back over to um <coughs> basically the civil war that's happening and we also get sort of introduced to um the imperial sides and um basically um Rogel dawn uh what the sigilite sigismund and uh no they're, they're talking about obviously the the scuffle that's happening on mars they don't really seem to realize the threat at the moment they just think it's a little bit of civil war um so they want to send uh, they send, they send basically Sigismund and some uh, Imperial Fist to go and, and and basically settle the crisis. Um, they turn up and they, they try and the first their first plan is obviously to land at the forges that um, create all the the weapons and gear and ammunition as a, as a you know as ever, as ever the Imperial Fists are as dogmatic they are. So they they land there they collect what the resources they need and they want to try and push to the loyalist forges to squash the rebellion. Unfortunately, they find out it's a lot more difficult to do it than they originally thought <coughs> thought now with all the new uh dark mechanicus dark mechanicus new toys and, and whatnot so unfortunately they're pushed back and it becomes a retreat um well basically they, they can't they can't hold the land so they they grab what they can to flee um taking i believe uh locum is it locum came? i think they yeah they take locum came and in which they did, will declare the new fabricator general in later novels, leaving obviously um, Impervious Maximin and Cor uh, Corel Zeth to fight fight their own battle, um, which is sad for them because it's a losing battle because they're basically the last two loyal forges against all the Mars at this point. Um, uh, Impervious Maximin basically detonates his forges so so that nobody can get to them, and uh, Corel Zeth. Um, fights the last stand basically against the Dark Mechanicum's uh, forges. Um, uh, there's, an, there's a really nice sort of battle with um, knights. They do a last look, last heroic, 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 heroic charge um, to kill the general who's been you know dead, pissing them off this whole time, which they do successfully, which is nice. And we also get to see a nice, nice grand epic Titan fight with the Stormlord back in action, taking on a few other Titan. You know, basically. Um, Taking on Legio Mortis, they uh, I think they have the same number of Titans, but they're grievously outgunned because unfortunately Legio Mortis has an Imperator class Titan, which is the one of the biggest. It's lot much larger than a Warlord. Basically, has just just a giant fortress on its back as well. So they um, they try and fight they try and fight um, fight this thing off. They do a good job. Unfortunately, um, Legio Mortis outs them out at the end of the day because they have the, the firepower 
But in the last minutes um, before her forge is taken, uh, Coriel Zeth detonates the, the volcano, destroying her own forge and all her, her secrets, which in turn also takes out Legio and Waters' uh, Imperial class Titan in the end. So massive casualties there. And the novel sort of comes to an end at that point, and you were sort of left with all this sort of grand information like it, it, it was such a good book in the way that it delivers a lot of good lore and a lot of good action which is what you want to see but despite not having the starties it, like you read it and you, you realize you don't even need it because you have knights you have titans you even have mechanicus fighting each other and you have you still have as, as much devastation as you would have in any other grand book and you have that you even have a little subline story that has nothing to do with that which is a nice little like turn off so it, it provides a little bit of everything for whatever means you want like you would i guess you would only not really like this book if you weren't a fan of mechanicus or you know the titans or whatnot because you, you just didn't care you only wanted to care about the imperium so yeah because there's nothing nothing really about the imperium in this, this book other than them trying to get a little bit of resources back from from mars so when you yeah so once once you finish the book you like you're left with a lot of information and i feel like the book sort of clearly sums up what the omnisar is like it pretty much states that no, the Emperor is not the Omnisar, and yes, there's a, 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 a dragon, which may or may not be the Void Dragon, locked in um, Mars. And when we say dragon, we don't mean a literal you know, lizard, fire-breathing lizard. It's more like an entity that they just refer to as the dragon of Mars. Um, that doesn't really have a form. Um, I, 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 it's common it's common knowledge that it is just the void dragon the a katan that was sealed away sealed away by the emperor um which i guess you could then in theory believe that to be the true omnisar but um you know doesn't you know do machines have machine spirits um i personally i stand with coriel zeth you know no they don't they're just machines you know you don't have to pray to them they do what they're designed and and whatnot um and but yeah everyone has their own opinions especially like nowadays in the 40k like when they don't read um heroes horace heresy books and they only read what they believe in <clears throat> what they read in obviously the current 40k books they don't sort of know this backstory and and, and you know it, it's interesting when people you ask them like oh yeah so I, I do you believe what what part of the schism do you believe is the emperor the omnisar or is he not if you read this book, you're like, well, he's obviously not the Omnisar because you find out he planted the prophecy for himself so that everyone would think he's the Omnisar. And and the Omnisar isn't even the Omnisar to what you think it is. It's just a sealed away entity that's been influencing people into this machine-like society so that the Emperor could have his forge. So, yeah. But that's just one thing. We don't really get to come back to Mars after, after this. Um, they basically just blockade Mars at this point, and it's just sitting there fighting until... I'm not sure when Mars finally gets liberated. We do get a lot more interesting stories, like, um, about the Mars. It's, like, we get a few short stories about Mars itself. Um, I think they're, um, they sent a knight errand to try and destroy, uh, Mars. Or, well, not commit, uh, exterminators, but to stop Mars' basically, um, rotation so that everyone, all uh, organic stuff die off. Um, but that's less like way down the line though. Like for now, this is the main, this is the, the like one big book about Mars, and I think everything else is just sort of smaller, um, white tales um, in the end. But in the end, I think it's a very good book. It gives you a very good outlook on um, you know the the allyship between the Imperium and the Mechanicum, because they're obviously two entities. And yeah, so I, I especially this is a really good book to read with a new timing of the titanicus that which has just come out and all the knights that games workshop are doing so i know and i know a lot of people now are running knights and, and getting into the Adeptus titanicus so if you're one of those people um who you know is just playing these games um you know this is a good book to read i know they they um they, they give you snippets of the titanicus book to read which is also another good book to read and i'll eventually do a review on that one but if you wanted more because obviously you finished one book and you want more you know you can read titanicus you can read the imperator uh imperator um, and you can create, read Warlord, I think it's called. It is, I'm not sure. But this is also another good book because it hits all those spots as well. So it gives you that knight action. It gives you the titan action. 
And if you're a uh, Deadless Mechanicus fan, it gives you that faction as well. So it's all those good spots for you. So I think it's a, it's a good book to read, even if you're not really a fan of the Horus Heresy. So thanks for listening to me drag on, guys. And stay tuned for another, another book. Next one will be, I believe, Tales of Heresy, which is the first book in the series that has a bunch of sh uh, short stories. So that'll be interesting. So stay tuned for that one, and I'll catch you guys later.